Center, which is a humanities Microphone. research center. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> which is a humanities research center at the University of Texas at Austin. So it's a hybrid library museum archive with gallery space on the ground floor and a reading room and classrooms on the second floor where patrons can access manuscript, rare book, film, photography, art, and performing arts collections. Costumes have until recently remained uncatalogued, and we have endeavored to catalog and photo document costume items and make them discoverable through our website. We also implemented a costume access policy in 2009 to make costume more accessible to on-site researchers, students, and visitors. So very quickly, I'll just go through an overview of the film Costume Holdings at the Center. So I'm beginning with a slide that has nothing to do with film costume to underscore the center's collecting history. It began as a library and archive with text-based material at its core, and these remain central to its collecting mission. Costume is not its own collecting department, but is part of the film or performing arts departments. And costume is merely always acquired as part of a larger archive of materials from an individual or a business entity. The first significant film costume acquisition came with the voluminous archive of David O. Selznick, Hollywood, an international film producer. Included with the business records and production materials were five original costumes from the Selznick produced film Gone with the Wind, personally chosen and retained by Selznick. After a single exhibition of the costumes in 1983, seen on the right, the costumes were deemed too fragile for future display. Reproductions of four of the five costumes were commissioned to be made by two talented students at the University of Incarnate Word in San Antonio. For over 30 years, sorry, for over 30 years, these excellent reproductions did the heavy lifting of frequent travel and display. After undergoing conservation work, three of the five original gowns were displayed together publicly for the first time since 1983, seen here at the Ransom Center last year. In 1982, another large film archive was acquired, that of actor Gloria Swanson, whose career spans the transition from silent to talking films. A few props and costumes are present in the archive, including one costume from Swanson's most famous role, his Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard, and a pair of sunglasses that are actually Swanson's own, but could have easily been worn by her on-screen character. In a collecting anomaly, a small handful of film costumes were acquired independently of an archive in 1985, representing both major and minor films of the 1940s through the 1960s, including An Affair to Remember and I'll Cry Tomorrow, a film for which designer Helen Rose won the Oscar. In 1991, the archive of Texas-born designer and artist Gordon Conway was acquired, a woman who helped to define the role of the film costume designer in the 1920s. In the 1990s, reproductions made by none other than Barbara Matera joined the collection, giving us more than a passing glimpse of how Conway's sketches were interpreted and realized by a real master. The biggest influx of costumes came with the archive of Robert De Niro in 2006. Nearly every film was fully documented and the costume design process is represented from complete costume design and fabrication to second hand to ready to wear a range that can challenge the visitor's expectation of what costume design can be. Many unique conservation issues are present within this collection, including costume, costumes treated for fire stunts, splashed with fake blood, custom pieces now oozing plasticizer on the left, and decades-old makeup cases filled with hair pieces and spirit gum. These objects contribute to both the exciting and challenging nature of this collection. The papers of B-movie film noir queen Anne Savage were acquired in 2008. Based on her role in Detour, director Guy Madden cast Savage as mother for her final role in My Winnipeg. The costumes from the, husband, from the film are unusual and intriguing in that they are her personal clothing, including an item of her late husband seen on the right. My role in working with these collections, in addition to cataloging and access, includes managing shrinking available space, working with conservation staff to improve preservation housing for storage, travel or display, and participating in treatment decisions during conservation work. Finally, I build out or modify mannequins for exhibition with the assistance of many other talented staff and volunteers. On the left is an installation shot of the largest number of costumes ever displayed at the Ransom Center in 2010, many of which you have seen in this slideshow. And that's it. <laughs>